Hello. So the second major topic we are going to cover in this lecture is about fixed effects versus random effects. As we discussed in the previous video, OLS model is usually not appropriate for estimating model based on panel data set because properties of panel data are frequently inconsistent with OLS assumptions. Between model might be a solution, but it's a bit primitive, and uh, also it completely ignores um, the effect of time variation, like uh, the effect of GDP increase over time. It only assesses cross-sectional differences. And that's why fixed effects or random effects might be a better option. I would like to underline that you cannot choose yourself whether to use fixed effects on random effects because there are some assumptions to be met but thankfully there is a test which will help you to indicate whether you should use fixed effects or random effects so we shall start discussion with fixed effects estimation so in general fixed effects stand for subject specific means and fixed effects estimator is estimator in a regression model including fixed effects. In our case, alpha i is such a fixed effect. So this is an unobserved time invariant variable. And the interesting property of this variable is that at any period of time, its value is equal to the average value for the period. For instance, geographical distance between Poland and France is constant. And uh, basically it means that if you calculate average for the entire period of observation, let's say between 2000 and 2020, this average will be equal to the value of geographical distance uh, in any year. I think it's pretty intuitive. Probably I am over explaining this. If I, if I do, I beg your pardon. Okay, so if we have this unobserved uh, effects time invariant variable, then the procedure is as follows. So for each of the variables, for each of the observations, we calculate the difference between the value of variable for entity i in period t and the average value of the variable for a given entity during the entire period. In a sense, it's similar to between model, but in between model we just regress those averages, and in fixed effects model we actually regress the differences between values of variables and the values of averages. So we do it for each time variant variable and when it comes to this alpha, as I told you, if variable is time invariant, it means that its value is equal to average value for any period. So that's why if we calculate this average, which makes no sense, and then subtract this average from alpha, we always end up with zero. And this basically means that we can exclude this term from the model. So as a result, this is our regression. So this variable stands for the difference between uh, y for entity i in period t and the average value of y for this entity during the entire period of observation. And the same applies to the rest of time variant variables. So you could probably notice that if you include a time invariant variable to fixed effects model, you will always obtain zero. So this variable will not be included to the regression model, just like alpha i. So that's why you cannot include time invariant variables to fixed effects model. Uh, even if the program allows you for doing so, because 
not uh, all types of statistical software indicate um, time invariant variables. Uh, still, it won't be included to the regression model. So that's why you cannot include time invariant variables. So for instance, if you want to analyze how trade depends on geographical distance, then you are not able to do this using fixed effects model. So this is an example uh, of the model we are going to estimate. So trade uh, IT stands for the volume of international trade in the pair of countries I. So please keep in mind that here cross-sectional unit is not a country but a pair of countries in period T. GDP product IT stands for the product of GDP of countries from the pair of countries I in period T. Okay, actually I included this. GDP distance stands for the difference in GDP per capita. On this slide, you can find an example of fixed effects estimation. So we estimate the volume of trade between countries from pair of countries I. Uh, please pay att your attention to the fact that in this model, cross-sectional unit is not a country, but a pair of countries. So trade IT stands for the volume of international trade in the pair of countries I in the period T. GDP product is the product of GDPs for these countries for the respective period. GDP distance is calculated as the absolute difference in GDP per capita of countries from the pair of countries I in period T. And alpha I stands for unobserved time invariant individual effect. So we assume that there is some unobserved effect which is not captured by our variables and it's time invariant. And finally, the last term stands for the error term, as usual. So random effects estimation is a bit different. Please pay attention to the fact that when we run fixed effects model, we assume that alpha i is time invariant and group specific. In this case, we allow for random individual effects. We assume that this effect is not the same for the same country for different periods of observation. Our alpha becomes a time variant variable. And this is an example of such an estimation. So all the variables are interpreted in the same way as in case of fixed effects model. The only difference is that now alpha is assumed to be a time variant unobserved effect. Okay, so the choice of the model fixed effects or random effects depends on your assumptions. So whether you expect this unobserved effect to be time variant or time invariant. And also, please keep in mind that in order to estimate a random effects model, your model uh, has to fulfill the assumption of exogeneity. So it means that there is no correlation between independent variables and unobserved variables captured by the error term. So in this case, random effects is a safe option. However, if you suspect endogeneity, then you should use fixed effects model. I would also like to add that fixed effects models are usually resistant to heteroscedastic error terms. Okay, another thing I would like to say is that probably it's not for the protocol, but fixed effects is always a safer option. For instance, if you run fixed effects estimation without any test or other explanations, it's mostly fine. You cannot do the same for the random model, because random effects model is more restrictive. There are some assumptions to be fulfilled. 
And if you are not sure that those assumptions are fulfilled, you cannot use random effects model. However, I would also like to notice that usually fixed effects model is more conservative when it comes um, to rejecting zero hypothesis about coefficients um, values. So you are less likely to obtain statistically significant coefficients if you use fixed effects model. Usually, not always. Okay, so luckily for you, there is a very easy procedure in Gretel which will help you to decide whether you shall use fixed effects or random effects model. So we will try to run this estimation, this model estimation in Gretel uh, first for random effects and you will see why. So I'm using the same data set as I did in the previous video. However, we do not have GDP distance variable. We only have information of GDP of uh, Poland and GDP of trade partner. So the first thing I'm going to do is to define new variable. So GDP distance is equal to absolute difference between GDP per, oh, no, 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 it's poll GDP per capita and partner GDP per capita. Now I wish I used shorter names. Okay, partner, yeah, of course I made a spelling mistake. Now it's fine. Okay, so now we can specify the model, panel, random or fixed effects. Uh, I will use GDP product and I will use GDP distance. And trade is the dependent variable. So first we run random effects and this is the output. So first of all you can see that the model is biased by heteroscedasticity variance of the error term is not constant. And the second thing is the output of Hausmann test. So zero hypothesis of Hausmann test says that GLS estimates are consistent. In effect, it means that the model is exogenous. Um, yeah, so there is no correlation between independent variables and unobserved terms and you can safely use random effects. In other way, if p-value of Hausmann test is bigger than 0.05, you can use both random model and fixed effects model. If p-value is less than 0.05, then you can only use fixed effects model. So let us then try to run fixed effects. So here we are. Okay, um, as I told you, fixed effects um, model was designed specifically for um, panel data with unobserved effects. That's why it's usually resistant to heteroscedasticity. So you assume that if you run fixed effects, then heteroscedasticity shall not be a problem for your model. However, it also might depend on the type of statistical software you're using. That's why, if you wish, you can also try to verify whether the model is fine in terms of heteroscedasticity. Okay, so that was it when it comes to uh, panel data estimation. I would like to underline that this random versus fixed effects issue is not the only issue about panel data. So you shall still make sure that the rest of assumptions are fulfilled. Okay, so that was it. I thank you for watching this video and see you next week. Bye.